first and foremost, if you want to track good residents, you have to be in a good area. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, as always, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you, Todd? I'm doing fantastic, man. Well, Matt, Thanksgiving is past, you know, Christmas. All. It's funny, Matt, you go into some of these local stores and um, Halloween, the, like the day that Halloween ends, sometimes even like a day or two before the Christmas decorations come out. And the second Christmas is over, you're going to see Valentine's Day uh, decorations and then Easter decorations and so on. It's so funny going to some of these stores. And uh, we were at a restaurant the other day, um, just actually j- before Thanksgiving, and they were already playing all the Christmas music. They had the wreaths up. They had their Christmas tree up. They they had it all decked out uh, and, and ready to roll for in a of course, this restaurant was close to a mall, so I'm sure you know it, it plays right into it because all the people are going shopping in the mall for their Christmas stuff, and this restaurant's right there. So they're hoping with the joyous Christmas music outside. You see it, you as you walk in, you can hear you know the Christmas music playing, and um, so it is the season, man. It uh, Thanksgiving has ended and Christmas is starting, and it's uh, man, it's going to be December before we know it. That's how it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to come to terms with it's not summertime anymore, but uh, hopefully soon I can get to that point. It is not summertime, that is for sure. And maybe if you live in Arizona, it's still summertime, but not in Minnesota. It is not summertime. Um, but it, I embrace the seasons as much as I can. And so my it's funny, Matt, we had uh, the first real snowfall of the season. Of course, we had snow earlier but you just knew it was going to melt right away because it was what october and so but the november snows can stick around for a while Mm -hmm. and man my son just woke up and i can hear him my wife wakes him up and i'm downstairs in my office and i can hear him just blah 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 just talk 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 and he's just the happiest kid in the world comes downstairs, runs into my office, gives me a big hug. He's like, it's snowing out, dad. This is amazing. I'm so excited for the snow. And like the next day, same thing, wakes up, comes downstairs. Dad, are you excited that there's snow on the ground? I'm so excited to see the snow. He forgot his snow pants to go to at, <laughs> back at home to go in school. And my wife is like, hey, you forgot your snow pants, but you're not going to be able to play outside today. He's like, no, I'm going to play outside. She's like, no, nope, sorry. He starts bawling his eyes oh, out. He's so oh. mad. It just embraces the seasons. Uh, man, if you want a life boost, you got to talk to my son. He is just going to tell you how amazing every single day of, of, uh, you know, every single season, every single day, like there's something cool. There's something amazing to look forward to. Yeah. So, which awesome. is true, man. I mean, it is really true. That's how we should all look at it. There's something really cool to look forward to every day. One of, one of the things I do, Matt, and this is a kind of off topic, like I always, one of the things I do, um, not every morning, but try to try to do it every morning is, is, you know, I, um, uh, I, I, I thank God for the opportunities that are coming my way today. And may I take advantage of, you know, the right opportunities, may the right doors be opened and and the wrong doors be closed. But I think again, whether you believe in in God or not, um, that's not the point. The point is you need to be thinking about the opportunities and every day we have opportunities that are presented to us. And we need to have eyes wide open for those opportunities to be thankful for those opportunities that are, that are presented to us. So um, with that said, Matt, what are we actually talking about today? Oh, we're actually talking about how to attract the best residents for your properties. Mm. Yeah. So we all want these residents that aren't going to destroy our places. And I, you know, if anybody's owned a rental property for more than a couple of years, you've probably had a bad, a bad, a bad tenant, right? A bad renter. And, and it's easy to get. Um, And typically, you know, those bad renters come, because we didn't do our due diligence, um, 
sometimes they come for other reasons, but typically they come because we didn't do our due diligence. We weren't careful enough. We didn't, maybe we just didn't buy in the right area to attract the good residents. Um, but we can somehow avoid those bad residents. So how do you, how do you, and, and you're not, you're never going to always avoid them, right? We're trying to attract the best ones and we're trying to then capture the best of the best, right? Yep. And so, uh, Matt, I'll let you start off. What do you, what do you do to try to attract the best residents? Well, you, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things, I guess, that go into it. Uh, you got to have a, a good listing. So you're, you got to have professional uh, photographs uh, for the property, you know, maybe a, a video walkthrough uh, so people can actually see it and feel like, oh, yeah. this is a place I, I want to live and have really descriptive language in the listing that uh, makes it, uh, you know, feel like, like, oh, I love this place. I love the community and, and uh, the neighborhood and stuff already. And so, um you know, the, these people will see this and they'll want to connect with you. And you got to have great follow-up, great communication throughout the process. You can't just drop the ball and, and hope for the best. Uh, so, you know, your property management and your leasing agent, uh, you, you need to have ones that have that skill to be able to really I don't know, chat people up and, and uh, show them that uh, this is where they want to be. Yep. Yeah. Um, I agree hundred percent with that. I think one of the, the the big things we want to be able to attract our residents to that property. We want to attract the right people, right? So that comes with, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, first and foremost, if you want to attract good residents, you have to be in a good area. I think that's, that's key, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can even be in a, in a bad area and attract the best residents in that area. But if you, obviously, if you want to attract the best residents, you're going to be in, in, the, in the best area, right? But Beyond that, whether you're in a C class area, A class area, B class area, or anywhere in between, to attract the best possible residents for that area, you're going to, a lot of the same things apply, right? So we want to have a property that is in very good condition, right? We want it modern and updated. We want as many amenities as possible. So we want a lot of of good modern amenities. We want it to be clean and well kept at all times. That means the grounds, right? That means you know, the lawn is being mowed, the, the landscaping is being taken care of. Um, there's not trash laying around um, anywhere. You know, the, the community needs to feel safe, right? So if you've got an apartment complex, the community needs, needs to feel safe. If you're in a, an area that attracts um, maybe some negative things, you know, it, it might be a fence and a gate, right? Security gate fence around the property that helps make the residents within the community feel safe. And this could, again, this can still be a C-class area. And, and also when we talk about improvements and, and conditions, we have to think about the area we're in. So we're not going to put you know, beautiful granite countertops and high-end cabinets and high-end flooring and all that kind of stuff in our C-class property because we could probably can't afford it. But can we put in nice laminate countertops and can we, you know, reface the kitchen cabinets versus maybe replacing them? Can we put in LVP flooring? Um, you know, can we do some of the things that are still nice to attract good, good residents into our property? So I think, you know, property condition is, is really, really important if we want to attract good residents to our properties. I also like to use uh, referrals from uh, current my current good residents. Uh, you know, I give them bonuses or whatever to uh, yeah. you know, have their friends or family that, that would also be good. Yeah, Matt, that's super important. That Google review, the the uh, apartments dot com reviews. You know, those are really really valuable. So if I can get um, those reviews to be five star four four or five star versus one or two star that can help a lot and then as you said i mean that that's part of the referral but also part of the referral is if i've got a good resident having some sort of incentive for them to say hey you know friend i'm living in this place i love it you should live here too giving them some sort of incentive referral incentive Something like that can be really valuable. And asking, you know, one of the things 
that I talk about when I talk about raising money is ask your investors if they can refer other people to you. Say, hey, if you know anybody that's this would be a good investment for, a good opportunity for, let's I'd love to connect with them. You know, it's the same thing with your rentals. If you got a good resident and you really think they're a great tenant and you're looking for another one and you want that person, that same exact person, well, they got friends, they got family and they can refer. Say, hey, you know, we can give you an incentive if, or give you a bonus or whatever, half a month free or a hundred dollar discount or whatever it is to get to for a referral program. So yeah, that's, that can be huge. Another thing I like to do is create an avatar or, or like a, an image of what my ideal uh, resident would be and, and what they would want. And so that I, I base my description and my, the yeah. amenities I'm going to have at the property based on uh, what you know that person wants. And, and so then that's going to trust yes. them in the end. 100%, Matt. That is huge. Creating that, that ideal resident and knowing who your ideal resident is and then advertising towards that ideal resident. Of course, you got to be careful with that, right? You, you want to make sure you don't say anything discriminatory. You want to make sure, and that, and most people, I, maybe not most people, but I, I, uh, my, my, my personality says most people don't mean to discriminate against people. Um, but you got to be careful. You can't say I'm looking for a, you know, a married couple with no kids or with, you know, or or looking for a married couple with one kid or, you know, that type of thing. You got to be careful how you frame it, but you can still advertise towards that. You know, let's, let's say your, your place is a place and, you know, just outside of the CBD and it's mostly one bedrooms and studios. And so you're looking for that young professional, likely just out of college. They may be married, but they don't likely have kids. And that's kind of your ideal person. You can't obviously say some of that stuff, but that's the type of person you're targeting, right? And and certainly if somebody comes in, they're qualified and they got kids, you're going to let them in. But that's the type of person you're, you're targeting is the, is the young professional just out of college, you know, maybe a couple of years out of college and they're looking for that studio one bedroom that's just outside of the CBD where they're likely working and where the entertainment is that they want to hang out in. Yep. Perfect. Um, and then, you know, same as if you're trying to attract a, you know, college kid and because you're, you're, you're really gearing towards students, uh, you know, have the amenities foosball table or something, uh, you know, that, that is going to really pull them in. Yep. One thing we do, when, Matt, when we get people in the door, we want to make sure we understand what our competition is doing. And it's even better if you can have like a book, right? And, and that book will tell, will tell, will show like up-to-date information, or maybe you have it on a computer app, but up-to-date information on what other communities in the area are offering, what their amenities are, what their square footage is, what their rent currently is, what kind of updates they have. Because when I get somebody in the door, it, we got them in the door and they're ready to make a decision, but they say, Hey, I'm going to go check out the meadows down the road. And you say, well, that sounds great. We're happy for you to go check them out. We've got all the information right here on the meadows. Here, let me, let me open that up for you. It looks like the meadows are 820 square feet for, for a two bedroom. Uh, you know, here are their amenities and here, here's their upgrades. Um, just to compare, you know, they're, they're charging, you know, 1250 for rent. We're at 1225 and their square footage, like you said, was 820, but ours is 975. And so if you sign right now, if you, we fill out this application, we can get you in and we can give you that discount that we talked about. You know, that's really powerful for, and by the way, I'm saying this as just a property owner, I've got on-site staff that are doing this job, but as an asset manager, you need to be talking to them about this type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That if I was uh, looking for an apartment and uh, you know, you, you essentially do all the research for me in, in my mind, like I can see the pictures of these other places and the price or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess I don't need to go to these other locations to tour. I can just sign up now at this one. Cause this seems like the best. 
The goal is to get people to not leave. When they come to your property, you want them to fill out the application and, and put in the deposit before they leave. When they leave, it's too late. They're no longer your resident. So try as hard as you can to get them to fill it out right there and not leave your property. It's great advice. I mean, because uh, then they're more likely to stay. You know, if, if, if they sign up right then, uh, then, then yeah. the deal's done. You can't guarantee just because they fill out the background check and just because they pay their deposit or the, the fees or whatever that they're going to, they're going to rent from you, but that's about much. You have much, much better chance of renting to them. If that happens, the next thing too, is Matt, uh, you know, and I already kind of alluded to this. We want to do thorough background checks. We want to do credit checks, background checks. We want, you know, believe it or not, Matt, prospective tenants, that have poor backgrounds and that aren't great tenants sometimes lie. What? Yeah, I know. It's crazy to think, but sometimes they lie. And so we want to make sure we're doing thorough due diligence on them as thorough as we can to make sure that that's actually the person that's applying for the property. Right. So I want to be calling references. I want to be verifying those references are actually real references. Back when I was doing background checks, if I got a, a, a referral and it wasn't from like a property management company or something, somebody reputable where it was really easy for me to figure out who was who. So, you know, a lot of these single family homes or small, small apartments are owned by, you know, Jim Jones or, you know, Joan Jett. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we, we want to actually understand that, that Joan actually owns that property. So we're digging in. So I would dive into the public records and I would, usually you could find out, you know, if they got a rental license in most municipalities, their phone number or email address is listed as well. And so you could connect with them pretty, pretty easily and go, Hey, just calling because your name was listed. So I've had it several times where, you know, the property owner, you know, was, was on the background check you know, Jim was on the background check and I called Jim and it's, you know, whatever number. And I talked to Jim and Jim's like, oh yeah, great person, blah, blah, blah. Awesome. 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 And then I look at the property records and like, okay, here's Jim, but Jim has a different phone number. Let me call with the property records. And I call them and they go, oh, that person's horrible. I'm evicting them right now. You know, wait, who's this other person I talked to? I have no clue who you're talking about, you know? <laughs> so do your background checks and make sure you're paying attention, right? Make sure you're looking for those loopholes that people get away with. And some, again, some will end up slipping through the cracks, Matt, because they're just that good. They're just that good. But if we can do our job, we'll, we'll, we'll catch most of them. And the same is true with like income or, or employment verification. Like uh, instead of calling the number that they list, uh, you know, look up the company uh, and yes. you know their phone number on Google or something. Yep, and get the get the actual pay stubs. Again, mm-hmm. those can be doctored and false, but the more you ask for, the better chance you're going to catch mistakes if they are lying to you. Mm-hmm. So we we ask for as much we ask for as much as we can right? To try to avoid those, those tenants that are lying or fraudulating their, their applications. Yeah. And, and most don't do that stuff, but uh, there are those few that yeah, most don't. certainly do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, cer- it's certainly not like 50% of them do, but I, you know, I don't, maybe, maybe five, 5% of them do. And those 5% can really ruin your day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we just want to, we just want to avoid that. You, you've always heard you, that that's the biggest thing you hear from people that have been landlords is all oh, the tenant law. This would be a great business if there wasn't tenants. And I've had this and this and this. And it's like, well, yeah, cause you, you didn't do a good job. And every time I, every time that almost every time that I have a bad tenant, it's because I hurried through the application 
I wasn't doing my due diligence. I didn't spend the time needed to really do the background check because either I was desperate because I needed somebody because it's been too long, you know, or I just didn't want to do the t- put in the time to keep showing. And so I just accept that person that put in that mm-hmm. application. I was like, ah, there, what, what could go wrong? I mean, your residents are your customers. And so of course you want to treat them with the, the respect that they deserve, but you also want to think like, okay, they're my customer. They're going to be my long-term customer. Yeah. Is there somebody that I want to be, you know, working with long-term as well. So you, you want to have good screening uh, and, and good customer service for them. Yep. Yep. You know, the, the last, uh, well, maybe not the last, there's plenty more things, but the, but one of the other things we've already talked about this essentially, but we, we talk, I talked really about this, about the presentation to the property, keeping it in good order and having it well updated, but maintaining the property, even after you get it completely full. So if it's a single family or a duplex or a hundred unit apartment complex, it doesn't matter. Maintenance is the number one killer. Okay. Residents will leave your property with if you if you can't maintain it and if you don't get those maintenance requests done quickly they will leave it most residents will understand maintenance that needs to happen they understand that maintenance needs to happen but if you can get to it right away they're okay with it if you if you take forever to get to it and you don't do it you don't do a good job at it they're gonna care and they're gonna leave and then along with that reputation starts to go down and now it's hard to get good residents in. So maintenance is huge. Ongoing maintenance, not just upfront uh, presentation, you know, but ongoing maintenance is huge. Yeah, and I think it's cheaper to just keep up with maintenance than to defer it and then try to catch up later. Hundred percent. Because you know what happens every time. It's by the time you have deferred, you defer, you defer, and all of a sudden your property occupancy is struggling, and. Um, now you don't have money to do the maintenance hmm. because your occupancy is, is hurting. So now you just need to get a resident in there. So what do you do? You get the crappy resident in there that's willing hmm. to deal with the garbage. And if somebody's willing to deal with the garbage, they're probably going to have some, some issues along the way. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of another thing with screening. Uh, if you can, as part of the screening process, take a look at the uh, per, you know, potential resident's car. Because how they treat their car is, you know, if it's messy inside or if it's clean, that's a decent indicator of what, how they might treat your uh, property. Yeah, very true. Um, You know, we can only do so much. Again, you got to be careful how you screen people Mm -hmm. because you have to, there's fair housing laws in place. Um, But yeah, very true. Like we, we can to an extent look at, how they're treating other things. And, um, I know landlords and and I've, I've never done this and, and I, quite frankly, like we're too big to do this, but I do know smaller landlords that will pick up the application from the current place they're living at. So if you're a small landlord, you got one property or two properties or three properties, you just kind of want to be Careful. I know uh, people that do that, that go to that current place so they can see the condition that it's in right now. Yep. So. All right. Yeah. And, and as always, follow all the local laws. Uh, you know, you know, no need to discriminate and uh, no need to break the law. You can do proper screening well within the confines of the law. You can 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, what else? I, there's, there's other th- things. Right. But, uh, I think it's, it's, uh, you know, really comes down to a couple things is your property and the condition your property's in, and then your screening and, and background check. Those are the two big things. All right. Very good. Cool, man. Well, you have a fantastic rest of the day. Make everybody Saturday. Thanks. You as well. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, Give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. Your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to venture D 
VentureDproperties.com, VentureDproperties.com and download our free ebook on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.